With the help of Hashem, we are learning Yuma Daf Mem Vav. We just learned the three-way Machloikas Tanoim, and we're going to focus now on Shitas Rabbi Meir, that every day on the Mizbeach there was an additional pyre that was sent up, that was set up, in order for us to have weir to burn the limbs and the fats that were not consumed at night. We're speaking about the limbs and the fats from yesterday, Korbanois. The other Tanoim hold that after they prepared the Marach law, which during that preparation, you would have to take off those limbs and fats and put them on the side, on top of the Mizbeach. You would put it back on the Marach law. Taka after the oil, the daily oil was brought, but it, was, it would be fully burnt on the same pyre. Rab Meir holds that anything that belonged to yesterday's karbanos, Taka needed to be fully consumed, fully burned, but for that he made a stand-alone pyre. And we're going to begin today learning two statements from Bar Kapara. What we will be focusing on is what happens if we're going from Friday into Shabbos. And the Evarim and the Pedarim of Friday's carbon wasn't fully burnt on Friday. Are you allowed to burn it on Shabbos? Let's not forget, my friends, that Shabbos one is not allowed to burn. Eloma, when it comes to certain carbonos, as we will review, when the Torah uses the word bimoy adoy, something has to be brought in its appointed time. From there we learn that you know the carbonos tzibur that are time related, they override Shabbos. Now, how would we apply that when it comes to the Evarim and to the Pedarim, to the animal parts that came from a weekday carbon? So we will learn that there's a Barkapara. We're going to learn how Rava opined regarding Barkapara. He'll agree with Barkapara, but he found Barkapara's statement non- unnecessary. We're going to have a statement from Rafuna. We'll have two ways of understanding the statement of Rafuna. His words will be, Tchilasai doicha, soifoi eina doicha. We will see whether Rafuna is referring to our case of burning items from Friday on Shabbos or whether he was referring to karbanes that are being brought betuma. And according to one interpretation of Rafuna, we will have a machlekes between Rafuna on one side and Barakapara and Rava on the other side. That's going to lead us again into the topic of whenever we do find that when we have two things in front of us, let's speak about Tuma, that Tuma is overridden when it comes to a carbon sibur, is the pshat d'chuya or is the pshat hutra? In other words, do we say that when there's tuma and sibur, that because of the importance of bringing a carbon sibur, we completely disregard the whole issue of tuma? It's as if there is no issues as, as, at all with tuma. It's permitted. Or no, there's a problem to bring a carbon betuma. Elama, bringing a carbon betzibur is even more important. But it's only overridden. And again, as we will see on Nafkemina today, whether we say hutra or whether we see dechuya, and the final topic that we will learn in today's daf, which will be the final topic of the fourth Patek, will be regarding the love, a negative commandment of extinguishing a coal that's on top of the Mizbeach. And we will have various opinions, how do we apply that to a coal that was removed from the top of the Mizbeach? In other words, if someone scooped coals and they brought it down, and someone then extinguished those coals, are you going to be chayiv? Is it no longer on top of the Mizbeach? Or, or are you going to say, no, it's still considered a coal from the top of the Mizbeach, for which you will be chayiv, Malkus, if one extinguishes it, and a lot more. Chavira, let us start on Daf Memvav, Ahmed Aleph, two lines from the top of the Ahmed. So says the Gemara, Chavira, again, we are going back, focusing on the Shita of Rabbi Meir, that holds that an additional pyre was set up every day, the Mishnah spoke about every day, upon which to burn the, those parts of the karbanos oila, so the limbs, and the fats from all of the karbanos that needed to be burnt previous day, if they were not fully burnt, or if they were not bachlal put on the pyre. And uh, we, as we spoke on last year, one would argue, if you have parts of a carbon that was slaughtered yesterday, that was bachlal not put on the pyre, shouldn't that in itself invalidate it? Psule, lina. So we learned, no, that anything that's on top of the Mizbeach, specifically on the upper half of the Mizbeach, will not become invalidated by it becoming overnighted. So there's no psulina. For sure it has to be fully consumed. 
the other Tanoim, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda hold, it's going to be re-put on top of the Maroche Gedoyla, but Rav Meir holds there is a standalone pyre, so let's focus on that. So Amar Abu Lazar, in the name of Bar Kaporam, that this is Bar Kaporam's understanding, Bishitas Rabbi Meir, that Oimer Hoyer Rabbi Meir, however, we're going to properly analyze Bar Kaporam as to saying two clauses. Number one, Eivarei Oila Shen Nitoisru, leftover parts from yesterday's Oila. Oisa Lohen Marocha Bifne Atzma Vesoidron, you make the standalone pyre in order to put on this new standalone pyre these animal parts, these carbon parts that were not fully consumed. And now let's call this clause number two of Bar Kapara, Va'afilu B'Shabes. And that is done even on Shabbos. Meaning, even if the animal parts come from the carbon that was brought on Friday, and again, normally, you can't uh, burn anything on Shabbos. Avade, the carbon tamid from Shabbos, overrides Shabbos. Bimoyadoi. But here we're speaking about parts of the carbon that was offered on Friday. Even on Shabbos, it's going to be burnt on the pyre. End of quote. Now, Hebra, we learned the Mishnah. We didn't yet learn Bar Kapara, and the Gemara is going to analyze what exactly did Bar Kapara add to something that we would not have known by simply reading Rabbi Meir in the Mishnah. And let's challenge clause number one, and we'll challenge clause number two. Regarding clause number one, the opening statement of Bar Kapara that he says that Oimer Hoyer Meir, etc. Tanina, we learned that in our Mishnah, that Bechol Yoim Hoyusham Arba Marochis. And as the Gemara explained, that the fourth maracha was for the animal parts that were not fully consumed. Gavaldik. So for that, Chevra halk up. Omar Rabbi Oven. And we're going to have two versions of Rabbi Oven. That you're right. You're right. When you learn the Mishnah, you know you make a new maracha. But still, loy, it's not pshita. There is a novelty in this added understanding of Bar Kapara. Bishitas Rabbi Meir. Nitzrecha. We do need Bar Kapara. For what? Elo lepsulin. Oh, what happens if these parts became invalid? This is true even if they became invalid on the day the carbon was slaughtered. Right, let's forget about Shabbos soon, weekday Shabbos. You, you shecht an animal. So one of the beautiful rules we learned in Zvachim and Kachim is like this. That even when there is a carbon that is halachically puzzle, once it's brought up on the Mizbeach, you can't bring it down anymore, and therefore you have to burn it. Now, by the way, we learned details. There are certain invalidations that are so invalid, for example, if the carbon already became invalid before it was brought into the, into the temple compound. There are some cases where even if it was brought up, you have to bring it down. But the Gemara doesn't go into this right now. Generally, the rule is that if something becomes invalid in the Beis Amikdash during the Avoidah, if it was brought up, and it doesn't come back down. So if Bar Kapara would not have made a statement, one might have thought that to make a separate pyre only for carbonates that in principle are invalid. They're only being burnt because of the rule that since it's up, don't bring it down. To make for that a standalone pyre, that we don't have clarity just by reading Rabbi Meir. So Rabbi Oven is saying that the reason why Bar Kapara repeated something that appears to be superfluous, no, he's saying that we always make a fourth pyre. Even if the only animal part, the only thing left, is dafka from a carbon that really is possible. But if it's in that category of im alu lo yerdu, then even for that you make, it's psulin, for you, you make a standalone pyre. Good. Now, here we're going to have two versions in a nuance. It's a little technicality. So, version number one. This is all Bishitas Rebbe Oven. Vidafka, that's only true indeed. That you make a standalone pyre that at least that fire already took hold on some parts of these animal parts. It wasn't fully consumed. It has to be Kamamish ash, fine. But at least it already began to burn yesterday. Avul mashlobahem ho'ur. But if, if, um, uh, but if no, if Bechlau was not put on the pyre yesterday, like we spoke out, the, I, it's, there's no psulina simply by the fact that it's on top of the Mizbeach. All right. So then, since it Bechlau, not there was no fire on it, that made were hold already, that you don't make a standalone pyre 
for these animal parts because they're puzzle. Because they are puzzle. Interesting, another nuance. In other words, once an animal part is already, at least it began to burn, these are the words in halacha, they, that is called lachmai shel mizbeach. It's called the bread of the altar. And therefore it's so chashuv that even though it's really puzzle, you make a separate pyre just for the psulin. However, if Aleph, it's puzzle, Bays, it never even began to burn yesterday, here at least Rav Meir would be moida to the other Tanoim that for this you don't make a standalone pyre. That's one. Now guys, if, if, if you have a Vodim and Pedodim, according to this version, that is not puzzle, even if it Bechlal wasn't singed yet, Bechlal wasn't burnt yet, yes, according to this version, you do make a standalone pyre. This little nuance is, like, number one, it's puzzle. Number two, loy mashlo behem ho'ur. Here, Rav Meir will be moidi, you don't make a standalone pyre. And now, Ike Amri, again, Ike Amri in Dabi Ovin, that echot kesheinu ve'echot psulin, even if it's kosher, e mashlo behem ho'ur, and only if it already was partially consumed, epis consumed yesterday. So therefore, as we mentioned, it's called lach shel mizbeach, here is where Rav Meir says you make the fourth pyre, the separate standalone pyre. But the Eloi, even if the animal parts are not from Psulim, 100% kosher, if none of it was burned yesterday, even Rav Meir will be moida that you don't make a standalone, that you don't make a standalone pyre. Okay, so all of this is just to add. If none of it, if none of it was, if it was uh, Psulim, and it never was on the fire at all. It goes on the Marachah Gedoyla or it goes off the Mizbeach? No, no, no. It goes on the Marachah Gedoyla, Avremel. It goes on the Marachah Gedoyla. Like the other Tanoim. Again, another detail. Nothing went on the Marachah Gedoyla prior to bringing the Tumid of that day. Which means, just technically, when the, when the coin in the morning, pre-dawn, when he goes up on the Mizbeach and he finds that some of the Ivarim and Pedarim were not fully burned or the Bechlal were not burned, Everything was removed off the big marachah because you needed to sweep the ashes to the tapuach. Then you reorganize the logs of wood. Then on top of it, you put the shnei gizrei yitzim. And the first thing that has to go on this is dafka the new, today's tamit shol shachar. Then what? According to the other tonight. Then you would put back up all the other parts from yesterday. Say that. And according to Rav Meir, again, there's nuance in Abavin. The, the Chiddush of, Rab, of Bar Kapara is, is that one might have thought that if all you have is Psulim, even Rav Meir will be Moida, you don't make a standalone pyre. So says Bar Kapara, no, Rav Meir holds, let's go with, just to cover both versions, that as long as they began to burn yesterday, even though they have to be finished, they have to, be, they have to become ash. And the psulim, the only there because of the rule im aluloyerdu. I don't care. Make a standalone pyre. That's the chiddush of Bar Kapara. Now the Gemara is going to tell you the novelty of the second clause in Bar Kapara. When Bar Kapara finished saying that Oimer Hoyer Ameir Afilu B'Shabbos. Now again, we got a problem here. Why did he have to say Afilu B'Shabbos, guys? If all of this is based on our Mishnah, the, the Mishnah, our Mishnah, the three way Machloikas Tanoim spoke about every day. The words of the Mishnah is Tanina. Vahayoim, oh, let's go better. Vahayoim Chamesh. Hayoim means on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is like Shabbos. One also may not burn things on Shabbos. If Rav Meir will hold that a carbon from a weekday cannot be burnt on Shabbos, so then he would also hold that a carbon from a week that cannot be burnt on Yom Kippur. The fact that he says, Vahayoim on Yom Kippur, not four, but five, no. So you automatically know that if it's that not Yom Kippur, on Shabbos, you make a fourth pyre. Afilo b'Shabbos. Omer Avachabar Yaakov Itzrach. No, that statement was needed. Because Sal Kadaita Chamina, I would have thought that our Mishnah is Hanemili only when Yom Kippur falls on Sunday. Now this is a machloikas, my friends, that we have in Shabbos, that Kuf Yud Gimel. And I want you to know that there is the sheet of Rabbi Shmuel that holds that only leftover parts of Shabbos may be burnt on Yom Kippur. Which means Rabbi Shmuel Taka holds that if the carbon came from a weekday and there are leftover parts, it may not be burnt on Yom Kippur. And automatically we understand the same thing would be with Shabbos. And automatically, even though Rabbi Shmuel was speaking about Shabbos being out of Yom Kippur, logically Rabbi Shmuel would hold the same thing weekday into Shabbos. 
In other words, there is a time where we are allowed to burn, even on Yom Kippur, leftovers, only if the leftovers came from a day like Shabbos. One might have thought that our Mishnah, Rabbi Meir, follows the sheet of Rabbi Yishmael. Because only over there do we have the rule, the Chelve Shabbos may be offered even on Yom Kippur, the next day. Avil, one might have thought without Bar Kapara, that the Emtza Shabbos Loi, Emtza Shabbos means middle of the weekday, in other words, Friday to Shabbos, or Yom Kippur on a Tuesday, in other words, the day prior to Yom Kippur is a weekday. So that's why Bar Kapara needed to say, no, that Meir holds, even, even on Shabbos, even on Shabbos, Okay, not speaking about Yom Kippur, from weekday to Shabbos, not like Rabbi Yishmael. Now, Rava agrees with Bar Kapara. He agrees that is the sheet of Rabbi Meir, but Rava holds that Bar Kapara was not needed for the second clause. His moida, the first clause, was important. Afilu psulin. But he says, again, in our Mishnah it says that every day, Rav Meir is speaking about every day. So, Amar Rava, man, hi, who is this? Like Rabbi Kapara, that he doesn't look, he doesn't care about that which he is grinding. When you are going to grind grain, first look at it to see if the, you know if there's any value to it. He's saying and saying he was there was no need for that statement. Again, ich bin moida. I don't argue, but there was no need because our Mishnah writes bechol yom tanan. So the Gemara says indeed kasha. That's a kasha and Bar Kapara, and as we continuously learn that kasha is not tiyufta. It's not the Yufta. Why is it not the Yufta? Because if without Bar Kapara, one might have thought every day, but not Friday into Shabbos. One might have thought so. Sunday into Monday, Monday into Tuesday, even if the remnants are only Psulim, but maybe not Friday into Shabbos. So Bar Kapara wanted to make it clear, even the Shabbos. Bottom line is, whether we had the need to, of Bar Kapara or not, both Rava and Bar Kapara, they both agree that Rabbi Meir holds that there's nothing wrong burning on Shabbos or and burning on Yom Kippur, the leftovers from yesterday's carbon tamid or from yesterday carbonis. And now the Gemara says, I want you to know that Upliga de Rafuna, it's a Gavaldike Gemara because we'll see in a moment, Lav Dafka Pliga de Rafuna. There are two ways to understand Rafuna. Whoever said in the base Medrish that Rafuna argues, Understood Rafuna only like one of the two ways that we'll see in a moment. So Opliga de Rafuna the Amar Rafuna said these words that Chilasoi Doiche Soifoi Eina Doiche. Now, how did they understand these words of Rafuna? Chilasoi Doiche means that you are allowed to shecht a tamid on Shabbos. Not only can you shecht it on Shabbos, you can even burn the Chalavim and Evarim. Let's appreciate that burning the chalavim and evarim bechlal is never essential. You get the atonement only through zrika sadam. Now, even though tamid is doiche shabbos, one might have thought maybe only the shechita. So everyone holds that the beginning, meaning burning the chalavim and evarim from the tamid of shabbos, is brought up on shabbos. But soifoy, according to this understanding, is mamish our case. Soifoy means that the tamid that was brought on Friday. If, for whatever reason, they didn't fully burn those animal parts on Friday, comes Shkia, comes Friday night, and the same thing would be Shabbos day, if it wasn't fully burned, fully burned, says Rafun, according to this understanding, it may not be burned. So clearly, clearly, according to Rafuna, he disagrees with that understanding in Rabbi Meir. He's not arguing with Rabbi Meir. Forget about making a standalone pyre, it's Bechlal not burnt. It's Bechlal, not burned. So when would Rav Meir say that on Yom Kippur you make five pyres? Perhaps that's going to be only when Yom Kippur is after Shabbos. Keshitas Rabbi Yishmol. Okay, now just to make it clear, Lav Davka Rafuna Bechlal meant as we just understood it. So Gufa, we just learned above, we quoted the words of Rafuna. Rafuna didn't say a word about a Tamid. He didn't say a word about Tamid. He didn't say a word about, is it Doiche Shabbos or not Doiche Shabbos. All he said was, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He, said, he said about Tamid. He didn't speak about Shabbos. All he said was, Tamid, Now what did he mean? My Einoi Doiche. So Rabchizda understands Rafuna. Rabchizda Amar. Not the way we understood it before. 
Rafuna understands that even Rafuna agrees to Bar Kapara and he agrees to Rava, that if you have a carbon tamid that's brought on Friday, if for whatever reason the animal parts were not burnt on Friday, doiche es Shabbos. No, the tamid is doiche, the tamid of Friday is doiche Shabbos. Mamish, like Bar Kapara. What was Rafuna speaking about? A whole new topic. The Tuma, the Chuya Betzibur. For, for example, if you don't have a coin that's tahar, you don't have, can the Tame coin offer the Tame? The answer is yes. Why? Because the Torah says regarding the carbon Tame, it has to be brought bim moi adoy. And based on the rule that Tuma duchoye betzibur, and you have to bring it today, bring it betuma. Question is, how much of it do you have to bring? Nachamol. The chelavim and the evarim is not essential. By every carbon, as long as you did the zrika sadam, you got your kapara. Of course, it's better also to burn the limbs and the fats. But maybe not when there's tuma involved. And that is what Rafuna was saying. That the enodoich, only the blood can be brought. Only the blood can, The evarim, forget about Shabbos. Every day, today, Thursday, today, Sunday, if there's Tuma, so says Rafuna, listen guys, Tchilasei Doicha, Tamit Tchilasei Tuma Doicha, offer the blood, Betuma, and that stop over there. You know what's going to happen? The limbs and the fats will become invalidated by tomorrow morning, and then you burn it, Psuli Amikdashim. However, let's go with Rabba. Rabba understood Rafuna the way we understood it before. That Rafuna was not speaking about the question of Tuma. Even Rafuna's Maida, that when there is Tuma, and because of the word Bimoy Adoy, we sprinkle the blood, you know what? We burn the fats as well. What does Rafuna mean when he says that Soifoy Eino Doicha, the Eino Doicha Sashabis? Fridays, Tamid does not, does not justify Hilul Shabbos. So every day when you bring a carbon, you can bring the, the Eivarim in the morning and at night, not, on, not Friday. Friday, you have to burn everything on Friday. The moment it's Shkia, that's it. You can't burn it anymore. Okay, now we are Abaya, whether it is Terabo or Terabo, let's go with Terabo. Lidi Dach Kasha, your understanding in Rafuna is problematic and Rafchizda's understanding of Rafuna is problematic. Four lines, the last narrow line. Lidi dach kasha, according to you, kasha, maishna tuma, that you will hold, that tuma is going to be overridden. Why? Because of the word bimayadoi, which teaches us afilo bituma. I mean, sai shabbos, sai tuma are set aside for the time, it, um, as mamish learned from the same word. So both of you are only allowing a certain level of hashivus of tamid over. Either only for Shabbos or only for Tuma. Why? So Shabbos, Nami Bimayadiv, Afilo Shabbos. And the same question is according to Rav Chizda's understanding in the statement of Rafuna. That Maishna, the second to last line, Shabbos, Dechsiv Bimayadoi, which is why you hold it may be brought even by Shabbos. Right? That is Rav Chizda's understanding that Rafuna is Moida Tabar Kapara and Terava. So Ibazoi, Tuma Nami Bimayadiv, Afilo Tuma. What's the rationale behind each shita? Says the Gemara Amalei. Let's go with the teacher of Abai. Let's say this is Rabbah. The last line. Why? Because I subscribe to the following logic. And here are the words. The end of the Tamit is like the beginning. This is beautiful. Tuma, when it comes to the issue of Tuma, that what? That the Tchilasa, Tchilasa means the blood. The Tchilasa bar mitcha Tumahu. Yeah, from the Bimayada we learned that you can bring Tamid, the beginning, Bituma. Once you began this Avoidah and you were allowed halachically to set aside the Tuma issue, so therefore logically do the whole thing Bituma. Soifanami dachi. I, there's Tuma. And I, you can be a yoitzah b'dieved, the whole carbon, even without offering the chalavim and evarim. Doesn't matter. We, we set aside tumah. We, oh, we, 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 we pushed aside tumah until the end. But Shabbos, this is a gavaldik word. Since the tchilosoi lav bar mitcha Shabbos hu. Let me ask you guys, we're speaking about the Friday tamid. Can you bring the Friday tamid on Shabbos? You didn't bring it on Friday. 
and you hop, oh, I want to bring it. You know what? The moment it's Shkia Friday afternoon, that's it. Oh, makes sense. So the, the, we're not speaking about the burning the fats of Shabbos on Shabbos. No one was speaking about that. We are, we are only speaking about burning the leftover fats, the leftover limbs, meaning Friday's carbon on Shabbos or Erev Yom Kippur's Tamid on Yom Kippur. Okay, fine. Can you bring Erev Yom Kippur's Tamid on Yom Kippur? No. Since Tchilosi Lav Bad Mitcha Shabbosu, so Seifenami Loi Dachi. Gavaldik. Now, Rab Chizdom. First of all, this type of logic, he doesn't hold that the end of the Talmud should be like the beginning. He doesn't agree to that. It could be, like, like he'll explain in a moment, even though the beginning of Talmud overrides Tumah, and you take a shechtet, even though the only option here is to bring it with Tumah, but again, the blood is essential. If you would not burn the limbs and the fats for whatever reason, you fulfill the mitzvah of the Tamar Shal Shachar. So maybe Soifa, you should not be like Chilasi. However, what's the logic in differentiating between the Shabbos issue and the Tumah issue? So this is beautiful. The fact that the Torah tells us Bimoyado Yafila B'Shabbos, according to Rab Chizde, is understood that Shabbos Hutrihi B'Tzibur. It's not that we're being machalal Shabbos by shechita or by burning. It's a problem. Elama, Tamid is more important. The way we view Shabbos and Karbanois, those Karbanois that God wants us to bring on Shabbos, it's not like we're pushing away Shabbos. No, is that there is no issue with Shabbos. It's completely permitted. Oh, if that's the Pshad, if the Shabbos issue is not there, then Soifei Nami Dachi. So no, when it comes to a carbon tamid, there is no Shabbos. There's not on Shabbos. So then why not burn the fats? Tuma, according to Rab Chizda, the whole concept of Tuma being overridden for a carbon sibur is not that it's mutter. It's not like it's non-existent. It's existent. It's a problem. Elama, you have to pick and choose. You do what's least problematic. It's called the chuya. It's only overridden. Tuma, that's only the chuya but sibur, but it's not permitted. So then it makes sense to say, if there is an issue of Tumah, only do the minimum necessary. You know what's necessary by all Karbanais, including the Tamid? Zrika. So, Tchilosoi, the Iker Kapara, Takedachi. But Soifoi, burning the fats, is not the Iker Kapara. So therefore, Loidachi, Gavaldik. Okay, so recap, what we learned is that we have... The sheet of Rabbi Meir that we make a standalone pyre to burn all of the limbs and the fats that were not fully consumed. What we learned today in addition is two nekudas. Nekudah number one is Lakula Alma. That even if there's a carbon tamid that became puzzle, and it's only on the altar because of the general rule that if something is already brought up, don't bring it down, even that justifies making a standalone pyre. You're giving chashivus to something, ki'ilu, that's puzzle. Number two, according to Bar Kapara, and according to Rava, and according to one understanding of Rafuna, that even on Shabbos morning, if the only limbs and fats that you have are from the Karman Tamid of Friday, you burn it. Aye, it's Fridays, you burn it anyways. And likewise, on every Yom Kippur, you, and every Yom Kippur you make a fifth pyre, according to Rav Meir. Aye, you're burning the limbs and the fats from Erev Yom Kippur's. Yeah, you burn it. However, according to one understanding, in Rafuna, he disagrees with that. Hitaka disagrees with that. And he holds that Shabbos is overrides bringing a carbon tamid, similarly Yom Kippur, but only for Tchilosai and not for Saifai. It doesn't justify it being burnt on Shabbos or on Yom Kippur. Okay, now we're going to a whole new topic, which will be the final topic of this Patek. And as we mentioned in the intro, when the Torah writes in Vayikra, and we were learning this Pesukim in the last year, Parsha Tzav, so you have Pedig Vav, Pasig Vav, where the Torah writes that Eish, Tamid, Tukad, Alam, Ezbeach, Loi Sichbe, Loi Sichbe is a love, meaning that I am not allowed, be a daim, to extinguish the fire that's on the Mizbeach, that's Al HaMizbeach, which means if someone extinguished even only a coal, the Chai of Malkus. So it but it was stated, Hamachabe Eish Machto, if the fire is no longer on the altar, you use the shovel to remove 
coals, whether that is you use the shovel to remove the coals for the katoidus every day, whether it is in the context of Yom Kippur, the special golden uh, rose gold, red gold that they used on Yom Kippur to take off the, uh, from the special pyre of Yom Kippur, whatever, there are coals that were already removed on the altar. Or, or Minaira. Now, guys, Bizman by Yisrishoin, during even Zman by Yisheni Shimon Atzadik, where the Neir Hamaravi miraculously, let's learn the way Rashi says in Shabbos, burnt Mamish 24 7. They never needed to bring fire to kindle the Menoid in the afternoon because they would lift at the end the wick of the Neir Hamaravi that was still aflame. And they would clean out the Ner Hamaravi, they would refill it with oil, but they would already have fire from the Ner Hamaravi to kindle the Menoida. But that was a miracle. Whenever we didn't have that miracle, you needed to bring new fire to light the Menoida. Where did that fire come from? So they would also remove coals from the Mizbeach, and they would bring it into the Hechel, and then they would use that to light the wicks, to light the, to light the Menoida. So the question is, these coals are no longer al hamizbeach. So are you going to be chayiv malkis for loy sichba? Machloikis. Abaya says, yes, you're chayiv. It's still called the ash of the mizbeach, even though it's technically off the mizbeach. And Rava holds, Pater, Rava's not advocating for you to do it, but there's no longer a love. Now, says the Gemara, the chab yeber if someone will extinguish a coal, on top of the altar. And guys, that's even if it is already in a machto. You already scooped it up. But if it's still on the altar, the kolam aleplik the chayiv. The trader says, eish tamit, tukad ala mizbech. If it's on the mizbech, lo yisich balav. Ki pligi, where is the machlik is abayin rova, the achte a'ara, it was taken down, and then the chabye, some chacham extinguished it. Abayin says, chayiv, because that fire is still classified as Eish HaMizbeachu. It's still called Eish HaMizbeach. And before we go on, we have to quote the Toysfus, the bottom Toysfus. Guys, we just learned that every day, every day they would remove from the Marach Shnia Shal Ketoides, they would have a Machta, which was made out of silver, and either it was Bas Arba Kabin, or then we had a sheet that it was Rabbi Yesi, it was six Kav, or maybe one understanding, Kav Midbaris, Kav Midbaris, or Yerushalmis, five Kav, whatever it was, it was a more than necessary amount. Then they would take the coals from that silver uh, shovel and they would pour the silver shovel in the daily golden shovel that was taken, not the red gold, but it was gold, the Chule, and it was heavy. And which means that either a kav or two kav or three kav of coal fell on the floor. And what did we learn? That it was swept into the canal, which makes a lot of sense. You're not going to have on the floor of the Azara hot coals. If Abai is correct, that what? That even after it's removed off the altar, it's always classified as Esh from the Mizbeach, Al HaMizbeach, so, so how did we learn that it was swept into the Amma? That's a Gavaldic question. Let's look inside Toysvus. So it says Rashi, and, and, therefore, and furthermore, so he quotes Rashi, and Rashi therefore teaches that it wasn't put into a canal of water, according to Abaya. He has another understanding of it. So says Toysvus, guys, this is two Toysvus in, the Lenira, the Loi Kashem, the Loi Mechaev, you're not chayev for extinguishing it, putting it directly in a can- into a canal of water. Bishum, the kivin, the b'mischavin choyte b'shal dalet kabin. You from the outset knew that you're taking off more than you need. You're taking a shovel that has the quantity of four kav. And you know that uma ara, you're going to be pouring it into the golden shovel that only holds three kav. So you know from the outset, v'nispazin mehem kav. And that will not be used. Since it will not be used, it loses Lakula Alma, the designation of Eish Ma'ala Mizbeach. So therefore, says Toisvis, Umashin is Pazir, that which scattered on the floor. Ain't no Oymid you, you, you cannot use it. It doesn't fit into the shovel of, of three kav. It doesn't fit into the golden shovel that's going to be used daily for the Katoidus. And therefore, Afilu Abaye Moide, Kivan the Intik Intik. Once it was removed, it was removed. Our machlekes is, someone took a shovel from the Mizbeach to bring the coals for the daily katoidus. 
And for whatever reason, someone took a coal from this shovel and extinguished it. If not for that act, this coal would have been used. That is where Abaya holds, according to this version, you're still high because it's Eich HaMizbeach. What about Rava? Rava says, Patir, because Kiven the Nitko, since it was removed, it's removed from the status, it's removed from the classification of Al HaMizbeach. You can call it Eish Shalmachto. It's not called Eish HaMizbeach. And the love of Loi Sikhbet was only regarding the, the Eish of Mizbeach. Now, let's add in between the lines, whenever we have a Machleik Sabai and Rava, other than in the six cases of Ya'al Kigam, the rule is Halachi Kirava. There's another Klal in, in Shas, and that is that we Paskin always like Rab Nachman. So asks the Gemara if this is the correct understanding of the Machleik Sabai and Rava, which automatically would mean that we will paskin like Rava, Elohod Amarav Nachman, Amarav Baravua, that Hamoidid Gachelas Mialam is Bech, whoever removes a coal from the altar, removing it from the altar, and Vikiba, Rav Nachman says Chayiv. Oh, you got a problem, because it sounds like he's paskining like Abaya. So you have a stira. We have to paskin like Rav Nachman, that's a klal. Halacha ki Rav Nachman, another klal, Halacha ki Rava. But they're contradicting each other. So says the Gemara, no, no, no. Elo, afilu teime kerava. Hasam over there meaning. The case of Rav Nachman, when someone brought a coal down from the altar, this is very important, loy intak le He's not discussing a case where someone brought a coal down, like we said, in the shovel, for it to be used. Stam someone brought it down. And therefore, Rav Nachman holds, since it was not brought down for a purpose, then the act of bringing it down, then the act of bringing it down doesn't change its status for it to be considered al hamizbeach. It was stam brought down. But over here, Hachan, the case of Rava, of Abai and Rava, we're speaking about the coal that's in the shovel. So when you took it off the altar, it wasn't stam taken off the altar. It was taken off the altar for it to be used, let's say, to light the katoiris. That in itself changes its designation. Because how can you call this Eish Ma'ala Mizbeach if there's the Hashivus? No, it's the Eish of the katoiris, Or it's the Eish for the Menorah. No, it's taking it for a mitzvah gives the act of taking it a lot more chashivus, which gives it the power to halachically remove it from its prior status. This makes a lot of sense. And therefore, we can pass in here like Rava. And Rava holds that you're potter. Keep the nitka, nitka. Ika da amri, another way of understanding the case, another way of, uh, uh, another version of the case of the Machlech Yisabai and Rava, that the ach se'a'ara v'kabye, if you removed it off the altar and you put it out, the kula alma, both Abaye and Rava, let's put Rav Nachman on the side for a second, they agree, Loi Plige, that what the Pater, why? They both agree to the technicality that the Pasig that we read in Sav, Eish Tamid, took at Al HaMizbeach, Loi Sichbe, Loi Sichbe is only when it's on the Mizbeach. The moment it's off the Mizbeach, you're Pater. And by the way, that would farem for the Kash of Toysus. Then we're good. However, where do they argue the Chab Yeberosh Shal Mizbeach? Now, another thing, guys. Not, it's not on the pyre. It's when it's on the pyre, then avada your chai of Malchus if you, if you extinguished any part of the fire. But if you removed it from the pyre, but you are still on the Mizbeach, here is where Abayah says chai because Eisham Mizbeach. And according to the latter version, even here, it's even more. Rava holds your pater because the moment it was removed off the pyre, kivan the nitka nitka, and here again, we're going to bring in Rav Nachman. You brought it down the altar. Now here the problem isn't only that Abayi Verocha, Verava, Halachi Ka, Halachi Kirava. It's much worse. Here it's going to come out that Rav Nachman is not saying not like Abaya, not like Rava, which is not the end of the world. But again, halachically, we're back to the same problem. We paskin like Rava, and we paskin like Rav Nachman. So furthermore, the Gemara uses the same logic. That over there, over there, meaning in the case of Rav Nachman, 
who says that if someone brought a coal down from the altar and then you extinguished it when it's on the ground, you're going to be putted. Same logic. It's speaking about someone who from the outset brought down a coal, not for a mitzvah. He shouldn't have brought the coal down. Now don't say he's high of Malchus for bringing it down. No. The Torah says don't extinguish it. He didn't extinguish it. He, he brought fire down. Hasam, since loy intak same concept. So even though it's not technically on the Mizbeach, but this fire is classified fire from the Mizbeach. It's only over here, meaning the case of Abayi and Rava, again, we're speaking about our sugya, we, you know, taking the shovel for the Ketoides, taking the shovel for the Ketoides of Yom Kippur, taking coals for the kindling of the Menoida. Since you took it off for a new mitzvah, now it gets a new classification. Since in Takla Mitzvah, that's why it's no longer called Eish HaMizbeach, certainly when it's taken down from the Mizbeach. And even if it's on the Mizbeach itself, you still have a Machloikis of Abaya and Rava. So it's a, an amazing concept. Like we are hidden, right? We come from God's fire. So look at that. When we, when, uh, let's go on the, if a Yid leaves the altar, but not for a Mitzvah, not for a Mitzvah, Look at the irony. Look at the beauty. This Yid is still considered as if he's on the Mizbeach. Adarab. Which gives the power for anyone to do tshuva. In fact, only when you leave for a mitzvah, but then you're good because you're going for a mitzvah, then you're no longer called Eishal Mizbeach, you're called Eishal Mitzvah. Oichid good. But if you're not leaving a place of Kedusha to do a mitzvah, it's as if you never left. The potential, the connection always stays, stays with you. This is a Gavaldic uh, concept. And on that we say, Hadran Allah Tanaf Bekalpi. We finish Pedic Kiravi. And as we are journeying through Yuma Khever, this is so Gishmak, this Masechta. It's Taka Kachim, but it's a very easy Gishmaka version of Kachim. God willing, in the next year, we're going we're gonna to continue where we left off. Just to have it clear, where did we leave off? We spoke, the last thing we spoke about was that he did. The second video, video number one on the par. Then we learned about the lottery. Then he went back to do the video Shani. They shechted the par. They already gave the dam to someone who's being mamadas the dam on the Reuved Revi. We are in the middle of the Ketoiris. In the middle, the only thing we learned in Pedic Revi was how the Koyan Gadol would take scoop with his golden shovel, three kav, the coals, to bring it into the Mizbeach. Into the, uh, into the Kodesh Kachim, and he put that shovel also down on the Revit Revi, which is in the Azar. That's where we left off. Where we have to continue is, now we have to get for the coin Godel, we have to get the actual Ketoides, etc. God willing to be continued.